You're listening to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal. Have you been betrayed by life, your body, or someone that you love? You're not alone. No matter what you've been through, Naked Self-Worth helps you regain confidence, joy, and enthusiasm so you can create a life you love and flourish. Tune in weekly and learn how. One of the hardest things about finding out that your partner has had an affair is the shame and embarrassment talking about it because it makes you feel like you did something wrong, that somehow you weren't good enough and that you didn't keep them happy. And there's such a misperception in the world around what affairs are like and what it means when somebody has had an affair. That's why I have created a monthly support group for women who have been betrayed by their partner. It's for women who are really ready to move through the grief and the pain in a healthful way so they can claim what's possible for them on the other side of infidelity and betrayal as quickly and as healthfully as possible. And part of that is having community, having community with people who were positive. There are so many online support groups where everybody's just really negative and grouchy and they just vent their own pain and they vomit their pain all over you. And this group is nothing like this. This group is honest. Yes, we're honest. But it's also about support and community and holding each other and building each other up. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, go to www.flourishafterinfidelity and sign up. When you sign up, you'll immediately get the Zoom link to our next meeting, and then you will be in the loop and you will know when each monthly meeting is about to occur. I really look forward to having you there, to building this community of strong women together. And once again, it's www.flourishafterinfidelity.com. And we'll see you at our next meeting. Hello, and welcome to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal. I'm Laura Cheadle, and today's guest is Kate Anthony. And if you haven't heard of you, I am so excited to be the one that gets to introduce you to her. She is the host of the New York Times recommended podcast, The Divorce Survival Guide. She is a certified coach with over a decade's worth of experience helping women, specifically women with children, make the most difficult decision of their lives. And that decision is, should I stay or should I go? And I know that so many of you are struggling with that. You're thinking, well, I never thought I would be involved in a situation where I had to make that decision. I never thought I would be facing infidelity or any other kind of betrayal. And oh my gosh, now I don't even know what to do. Now, on top of that, the other thing that she does that I really love is she helps moms recover from toxic and emotionally abusive marriages. And I don't know about you, but... I kind of don't think you can face infidelity and not have a toxic or abusive relationship. So you are in for an amazing show. Welcome to the show, Kate. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Laura. It was such a pleasure to be talking to you once again. (laughs) (laughs) I was on Kate's podcast yesterday. She's on mine today. I'll have to put the link on that too, because that way you can just get more of all of this goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of start from the beginning here. That question, should I stay or should I go? Let's just Mm. go right into that. How, how can you help somebody make that decision and what is that decision all about? And yeah, well, the first thing is, um, I don't tell anyone what to do. (laughs) So, and I know that, you know, when I was going through this, I mean, I really agonized for a few years about whether I should stay or go because my marriage was really toxic and really, uh, desperately unhappy. And I struggled with this for so long and I really did want someone to tell me what to do. Oh, like I really did. Um, I was desperate. I was looking for a burning bush. I was like, somebody, somebody tell me what to do. And, you know, I would ask my friends who had been divorced, like, how did you know? And their response was always, when you know, you'll know. 
And I was like, that's not helpful. Right. Um, and it was true <laughs> when I knew I knew. Um, but I also over the years have sort of developed a process because, you know, our own knowing while it is the greatest tool we have as women, it is also often the most buried tool that we have. And I know this is something that you do in your work, Laura, right? And yes. and by the way, right? Like it's the T in flaunt. Yes. So it's the last step in the process as it is for me, right? That That trusting your truth, there's so much that has to be excavated before we can even trust in our own truth. Right. And oh so, my goodness. Right. So, so, so the, so I have a, you know, a, should I stay or should I go is my, my, my a program that I have. Um, it's an online coaching program and it is, and it does take you through um, the steps. The very first thing that we have to do is excavate that part of ourselves. Because if you've been in any kind of relationship that is toxic, unhealthy, um, unhappy, you have probably been, and and listen, if you're a woman in the 21st century or any time in the past, you right. have probably been burying your needs, your desires, your, um, your feelings, all of that in favor and in service of men and children. If you oh are gosh, a yeah. cisgendered, you know, heterosexual woman, um, you know, men and children have taken the front seat and you have taken the back seat. And so the first thing we have to do is figure out how to get you into the front seat and do the work to teach you how to drive essentially your own life. Yes. Um, and so the very first step in this process is who figuring out who you are, what do you love? What you know, again, like I think our processes are so similar, right? Yes. Um, it for you, it's what's your fetish. For me, it's like, you know, what are your values? How do you set effective boundaries? What are your boundaries? Like, what are the things people are constantly stepping over our boundaries? We don't even know it. We're not even aware of it, <laughs> right? And so right. bringing awareness to our capital S self. Yes. Right. And then we can start to distinguish and discern, okay, what's actually happening in this relationship, right? And when you have this part of yourself uh, figured out or, or, you know, in the front seat, in the driver's seat, right? When you then look at your marriage from that perspective, the alignments or misalignments are a lot clearer. I bet. Right? Yes. When you know who you are and you know what you love and you know what you value, I mean, even values, right? Values are, are uh, I think, some of the most misunderstood um, things that that are, you know, often talked about and, you know, corporate corporate structures have taken them over. You know, oh, we have a value of, you know, integrity and blah, 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 blah. And then like they're crooks, right? Like, right. <laughs> right. So- but for our own personal values, mining for our own personal values is a very, I think, very specific and um, very, um, I think, eye-opening process because, you know, I, one of my favorite stories to tell is that I had a client once years ago who we were mining for values and she was, and she came up her, like her top value that was weighted the most high and, and was the most important to her was personal development. And now obviously she was working with a coach. So clearly there, you know, she had that, she had some value there, but it right. was absolutely her top priority. She listened to all the podcasts. She read all the books. She was in therapy. She was in coaching. Like she just did it all. She was committed to growth and expansion in her life. And she was married to someone whose response to this was, "You, I'm the same person I was 20 years ago. I, I don't, I don't need therapy. I'm fine. Right. And, you know, judgment aside. Right. That's a misalignment. Like that just doesn't, that doesn't match. No, it doesn't. Right. And, and like that sometimes until something is stated clearly, I think we can like feel it, but think, oh yeah, but we love each other, but I love him. Uh -huh. 
And it's like, right. well, that's oh. great, but what mm. is love? Yes. Like, what is, what is love? Like, what does that mean to you? And I, I hear this all the time too. I, oh, but I love him. Okay. What do you love about him? Right. And then there's it? like, I don't know. I mean, I love that we like, we're, and they get stuck. Why do you love him? How does he make you feel? How do you feel in his presence? Mm -hmm. Do you respect him? Do you like him? Mm -hmm. Right? Does he elevate you? Do you elevate him? Are you supporting each other's, you know, spiritual and, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, all of all of the things, all of right? Yeah. Um, there's in the road less traveled. Um, he uh, M. Scott Peck, who wrote the road less traveled in 1978. Mm -hmm. And he defines love as the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. Ooh. And there's more to that definition, but like extending yourself. Wow. Extending yourself. But like, first of all, how, how few people actually are extending themselves in a relationship yeah right? let alone for the purpose of mm -hmm. nurturing their own or someone else's spiritual growth like love is a spiritual process yeah right when we get when when someone says but i love him like okay are you expanding yourself with and for this person? Are you is are you growing spiritually through love? Yeah. Right? Like that's that's like the meat. Yeah. Right? That's like the juicy shit. Yeah. I love <laughs> that. I really love that. And, Me too. and yeah, and, and I love the the growth piece of that too, because it's not, I am in service of you. And I oh, will God, no. wash your clothes and wash them, mm -hmm. you know, and no, 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 it is a, it is like, it is a commitment. In my opinion, it should be a commitment to growing together. Yes. Um, in service of this thing like love, it's kind of, it's magical, right? Yes. Two people come together and this thing happens. And if we, two people are committed to the expansion of that thing and, and nurturing each other's spiritual growth and our own, right? So like we're right. all in this reciprocal growth process together. Like how, how different would the world be? Oh, so <laughs> much different. Right? so much different. Yeah. 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 And so from that lens, when you say like, what do you love about them? Like, is that, is that your definition? Like, does that align? And people are like, mm. um, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. Um, I don't, we go to church. I don't he, know. He takes the trash out. <laughs> right. I love that. He takes the garbages out. Listen, like, right. amen. And what there's else? gotta be more. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, and I really appreciate a lot of those questions that you raised too. How do you feel in his presence? If you feel yes. horrible, is that love? Right. That's uh, right. Yeah. And it's not, how does he make you feel necessarily? No. How do you, how do you feel in this relationship? Do you feel like a better version of yourself? Mm -hmm. I know in my marriage, I was like, I don't recognize myself. I hated myself in this relationship. Yes hated myself. It was all, I was terrible and I wasn't the abusive one, but I no. was meek and I was combative and I was constantly def trying to defend my worth. And like, what is that? Yes. Yes. It's no. funny because my son is in his early twenties and his girlfriend just cheated on him and they broke up. And in the whole aftermath, so many people have said, I love hanging out with you and I love hanging out with her, but I couldn't stand you two together. Oh, so interesting. Isn't it? Oh, poor guy. But yeah. And it's kind of like uh, that. If yeah, you're not happy, right. That's right. If you're not making each other better. That's right. That's not what you want. 
No, it's not. It's not. And it's, you know, and that's a hard thing to like, it's a hard thing to, to look at if you've been married for 20 years and you've got kids and you know, all of that. Like it, I think a lot of women will listen to this and be like, but that's selfish. Right. 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 Oh, but that's selfish. Like, so I'm not my best self. So I'm going to rip apart my entire family. Like, right. And so, I mean, we can't, you know, we're going to move in. I think you wanted to talk about kids and you know, what I would say to that is, you know, and it's so, it sounds so trite and it sounds so, but it's, but is, is the most important thing in the world. What are you modeling to your kids? Mm -hmm. If you are not your best self, believe me, your children will never become their best selves. Yeah. They won't, especially if you're a woman and you have girls. Yes. And if you're a woman and you have boys, who are they going to choose and how are they going to treat them? Mm-hmm. And that was my moment. That was my aha moment. That's when I knew I, I had to go was mm-hmm. when I looked at my son, he was three at the time. And I said, oh my God, he's going to grow up to abuse women. If I don't get out of here, I he will grow up to abuse women. Right. Because it'll be the only thing that he knows. And I have zero control over what his father is going to do and continue to do in his life. Yes. And he did continue to yes. cheat and abuse yes. um, his second wife and all of those things. But what I created was a safe place and an alternative. And I'll alter- like what I what I say is that you give your children the gift of perspective. Oh, I like that. Right? Like if they're only in one thing, if they're only under the under the roof of, you know, abuse or neglect or just unhappiness, that's the air they breathe and that's that's relationships to mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. But if you are able to create something outside of the marriage. If you separate and you, even if the other person continues to do their thing and replicate and whatever, if you have one, if only even one home, the research shows this is all it takes one home that is safe and nurturing and has integrity and and commitment to emotional and spiritual growth, all of those things, whatever it is you choose to create, um, then they get this perspective. They go, oh, huh, I have these feelings when I'm at this house and I have these feelings when I'm at that house. That's different. And I don't like the way I feel over there. I prefer the way I feel over here, right? And they they get perspective and they get the opportunity to choose for themselves. But if the only thing that they've ever known is this one thing, they don't actually, they don't really get the choice to choose. That's huge because so many women that I work with will say, I know I'm not happy, but at least I have control over the kids most of the time. That's right. At least, you know, he's only home for a few hours at night. At least I do this. And I think it's a nice little story. And I think it is. It is. And at the same time, you are dying inside. Mm -hmm. Every single day, you are pouring poison over this garden inside of you that's desperate to grow. And you feel the like, you feel the like the buds, like just trying to like pop out from the from the earth and right. And then you just douse it. Yeah. Every day. And that feeling is just the it's the worst. It's just the worst feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And and kids are smart. Yeah. They feel that too. They know. They know. They know something's wrong. Often we don't, they don't know what it is, right? Because their kids are so intuitive mm-hmm. and they're so smart and they know something is wrong, but no one's naming it. And when no one names it, then they start to, I guess, I guess it's me. I must be right. They start to question their own reality and they mm-hmm. question their own experience of the world. And then they, 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 yeah. The, and then they learn to distrust themselves when they get into a situation, into a relationship that doesn't feel good. Yes. Right. And then this is how the cycle keeps going. This right. is how and why what you're modeling to your kids is so important. Uh huh. Right. It's yeah. just so important. Oh, I guess 
mom and dad say they love each other, but they yell at each other all the time. Love equals yelling. Mm -hmm. So when I meet someone who yells at me, I think that's love and that's what I'm drawn to. Right. That's, that's how it is. That's how it works. That's Mm -hmm. how you got here. (laughs) Right. Right. And and that's exactly it. Like we didn't cause the infidelity. And at the same time, there are things in our psyches, in our past that we have unhealed wounds that also allowed us to be here. It's not our fault, but it allowed us to be here. That's right. That's right. And it's, you know, it is, it's unconscious. It's our unconscious mapping. And so no matter how much you talk to your kids about it, again, it's unconscious mapping for them too. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, so it's such yeah. it's it's such good stuff, and it's like a, a a gut punch, but at the same time, it's freeing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it really is. It is freeing. Once you've processed the gut punch, it can be so freeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, say more about these steps because first it's like that excavating yourself and Mm -hmm. then figuring out what's going on in the relationship and what's in alignment and what's in misalignment. Yeah. What happens after that? Well, I, I talk a lot, um, about, um, identifying abuse. Um, I think that far more women are being emotionally abused than we talk about Mm -hmm. than is understood. Um, and I think it's, to me, it is, it has become, and I never set out to be a domestic violence victims advocate or, um, you know, expert in uncovering emotional abuse. Um, but it, it, it kind of became my specialty because it's everywhere because it's everywhere. And I think that there is, so we go, I go through a lot of that in my programs, really helping um, women to identify these patterns. And I, you know, they are all systemic. They are all ingrained in this patriarchal system that we are all raised in. Um, And it's, and it's really important, you know, one of the, the, in the last few years, I think we all know that like narcissism has become this you know, buzzword, a, yeah. a buzzword, right? Everyone's divorcing a narcissist. Right. And statistically speaking, is that possible? Could that be possible? Right. Well, at first I used to say like, absolutely not. Like statistically it's not possible, right? Like now narcissism is a spectrum. Yes. There are narcissistic tendencies. There's, you know, benign narcissism, people who are, you know, who are, have a narcissistic wound, but are, not terribly harmful, right? I mean, all narcissism is harmful, but not, you know, they're not, they're not out to get you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's more malignant narcissism and then there's narcissistic personality disorder, right? So broad spectrum. Um, What I have come to, I was researching this a lot for um, my book that I'm writing. And um, one of the, and one of the things that I uh, the conclusion that I came to is that actually there are more nar- narcissists in the world right now than ever before, because we celebrate, we indulge, we um, we foster yes. this, we foster it. Yeah. Um, and then I was watching a, um, there was a Instagram video with a uh, uh, Gurumate, mm-hmm. and he was talking about how narcissism is normal in in childhood, right? Of All course. children have that initial narcissistic trait, right? Because they're self focused, and that's that's like for development. Right. Um, the brain the brain hasn't fully developed yet, and so you know the empathic centers of the brain in the prefrontal cortex have don't develop fully until we're 25 right so kids tend to be narcissistic right but we basically sort of stunt the growth at this point at the narcissistic point by indulging by celebrating we're teaching them that they don't have to think beyond themselves. We elect a, I'm going to say it. We oh, yeah. elect a president who 
you know, who displays all of these traits, we celebrate this in our society. Yes. And so we have created this, this monster where men in particular are conditioned and societally praised for Mm -hmm. all of these narcissistic traits, for aggression, for, you know, the sort of bro culture, go get them, you know, like all this self-serving stuff, you know, the way that we treat women, the way that men are conditioned to treat women is abusive. Yes. And we celebrate and support it, you know, down to the court systems, to the fact that coercive control is not illegal. No. It has been codified as part of the definition of domestic violence in exactly five states in the United States. I right? mean, that's, it's stunning, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. And so, and so this is sort of, you know, I get on, I get on a, I get on a high horse about this, but, you know, I do think that we have more narcissists than ever before and, or we are recognizing the symptoms and, and, but, but I do think that something has happened to us. Um, in the last, you know, I would say maybe 10 to 20 years where there are just more and more and more, and it's, it's terrifying, you know, and on the flip side of that, right. Women, someone said like, how do you know if you're codependent? And I was like, well, if you're a woman in the 21st century or any time in the past, right. Right. And you have been taught to put everyone before yourself and, and meet everybody else's needs above your own. And you're, you are, you know, you're codependent. That's that's the deal. Yeah. And if you have childhood trauma, which we all do, you're probably codependent. Right. Yeah. Right. And again, that's celebrated too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, the sacrifices she's made. She's such a good mother. She put everyone else's needs before her. Yes. Oh. Oh, she works and she's after her own, like, you know, her own enrichment. And she like, what kind of a mother is she? Yeah. 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 I even talk about in my TED talk about that in regards to the body. If Mm -hmm. a woman too out of shape and too heavy, oh, she has no self-respect, blah, blah, blah. But if a woman is buff and cut and fit, God, she must be at the gym all the time. How does yeah. her husband put up with her? Why why isn't she uh-huh. with her kids? Mm, she's so selfish. Well, really, I can't be either extreme. Where is that perfect middle ground of exactly healthy yet not fat? I don't right. understand that. <laughs> right. Exactly. There women, yeah, we can't we can't we buy can't a brand. No, no, we, we cannot, cannot win. No, cannot win. No. Yeah. So in terms of my programs, you know, I do I I really do go through that's like the self. Mm-hmm. And then society, culture, right? Like, Mm -hmm. because there's so much to that as well. There's also the the mental load and we're exhausted and all of this stuff, you know, that like, is your marriage, is your marriage terrible or is marriage just terrible for women? (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, which we're starting to really, you know, I think that most women it's something like 75% of women who get divorced don't remarry because like it doesn't serve us. <laughs> so no. we're like, oh no, I don't, I'm not opting back into that. No. Um, right. And then we, and then we go into the interpersonal, right? Like, okay, what is healthy communication? How do you communicate? We don't teach that in school. No. Isn't that sad? Yeah. How, what does a healthy relationship even look like? I mean, I get that question all the time what does a healthy relationship look like? (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And like that, if it wasn't modeled for us, we don't know. And there are so few models of it. Very few models of it. And all the things that we see on TV, media, everything, nothing is realistic. Right. It's not, it's not, you know, leave it to beaver. It's not, no, it's just not. And then we have all these reality shows like 90 day fiance, like things where like they're in love in like, come on, that's not love. No, that's not love. No. Love is what happens after you go through the honeymoon period, after the 
you know, the intense attraction and, you know, you're not having sex seven times a day anymore. And like, you're actually in life. Right. <laughs> That's where love right. comes in. Right. Oh, <sighs> And it's hard. Yeah, it it, it is hard. I I love that you address it on all fronts, because Mm -hmm. when we have the whole picture, when we understand this is the society, this is the culture, this is the air that I'm breathing. This is the way my mom was raised. This was the way her mom was raised. Wow. I see how this is starting to impact me. And now I get to choose. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing now from a place of, I have all of the information yeah, and I have, and I've done a lot of the transformational work Mm -hmm. and now I get to choose from that place. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. And scary. I was just going to say, now it's still scary. It is scary because partly because like, oh yeah, you're, you know, thinking of changing your whole life. Um, But also women aren't used to that level of Control, control, power. I was going to say power, but it is. It's control over their own lives, right? Mm-hmm. We we're not used to that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The idea that we get to make a choice. Listen, we wait for men to ask us on dates. We wait for men to propose. We wait for men to like, right? Right. And now suddenly we're the one that's making a choice. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What well, comes up with that a lot? Now I'm the one making a choice. What if I get it wrong? (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, I don't, first of all, if you get it wrong, if you're, if you're sure you got it wrong, okay, get back together. I don't know. Start to date and see how it feels again. I do know people who have remarried the same person twice. Mm-hmm. They've also divorced the same person twice. They oh got back in and realized, mm, no, nope. <laughs> actually. Nope. Um, but listen, I don't think, I don't know that they, there is a mistake. If you're really coming at it from the perspective that we're talking about, I don't know that you can make a mistake. It, it does become very clear. Um, what happens is that, you know, 69% of divorces are initiated by women. And at that point, men suddenly go, whoa, 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 hold on, wait a minute, I'll go to therapy. What do you need us to do? What I'm, I, blah, 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 blah. right? Not what I wanted. And yeah. Wait, right, wait. What do you mean? What? And women are like, I've been asking you to go to therapy for, for five ten- years, ten years. Yeah. And now you want to go? And what I say in that case is, all right, put a pin in it, separate. Hmm. Go through with your plan. Don't let, and we talked about this uh, on my podcast, right? Don't let the promises be the thing that keeps you. Let the actions be the things that bring you back. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. You want to go to therapy. You want to do the work. You suddenly realize that you have trauma that has caused you to be this way or whatever it is. Great. Right. Great. Right. Now show me. Right. Show me. Yes. And it will take years. The other, the thing that people don't understand is that they're like, he's been amazing for like two weeks. Anybody can be amazing for two weeks. Anyone can be amazing for three months. I mean, that's the honeymoon period, isn't it? When we're all on our best behavior and we're absolutely all kind and well. Absolutely. And healthy right. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So show, don't tell. Show me I what you're going to do. And also, don't be the one to call the therapist. Don't be the one. Like, if they if they want to do stuff, they can they can make all the phone calls. Yes. Yes. Sit back and and see what he does. Yeah. And that's right back into the whole codependent thing. We are so used to doing. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, And, you know, that's, I, I, you know, talk about 69% of divorces are initiated by women. (laughs) And my friend, Susan Guthrie said, she's like, but that's also because women are more, uh, more more apt to do the paperwork. 
<laughs> so most of them are initiated. Most of the paperwork is initiated by women. It's not necessarily that the women have been the ones to initiate the divorce, but I would say, I think it is. I I, I still think it is. And then we have to do the paperwork too. Right. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. So, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you said something, and I think it's really profound about letting the actions speak louder than the promises. I think that's yeah. really good. Yeah. And the work that you help women through is a transformation. So when you're working with people, how long does it take for us to transform Mm -hmm. where our actions are better, where we are saying, you know what? I'm not being meek anymore. I'm not whatever anymore. I'm not carrying the emotional labor anymore because old habits die hard. And if you're telling somebody else, I'm not playing ball until you show me but you're also doing it for yourself. I'm yeah. also not playing ball until I show me. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's a great point. And I think it, it, it very much depends. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, uh, you know, different people's trauma certainly is going to bring them to, you know, ha- there's, there's not everyone starting at the same point. Right. right? So um, I think that, listen, when I work with clients one-on-one, it, you know, I work with clients one-on-one on on a weekly basis for about, about three months. It it usually goes over into four and five. They have 12 sessions when they work with me. And so it it goes over like whatever, but in that time they will see major changes happening because they're consulting with me every step of the way, (laughs) right? One-on-one I am in their corner. I am writing the scripts for them. I am coaching them through the phone calls. I am like all of that. Right. And so it's much, and right, that's just the beginning, but it is the launch. It is the launch pad, right? It is the thing that will take them into, uh, oh, wow, I did that and it was totally different. And oh my God, that felt so good. I want more, right? And so it's, listen, total transformation. I don't know if we all ever totally transform, but, um, but if you're just doing an online program, maybe not as, maybe not as, you know, as impactful, right? I think the one-on-one work is really where it's at. Yes. Um, or I have a, I have an amazing group program that is great because it's the women in community and then I'll pair them off in accountability, yes. you know, say like, okay, you've been saying that you're going to make this phone call to an attorney to get a consult for three months now. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do it this week and you're going to check in with her and I'm pairing you two up to, and, and yes. things get done. So yes. it, I, I do think that listening to podcasts, reading the books, doing online programs, amazing, 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 amazing. But there's nothing like getting into therapy with somebody who actually understands all of this, yes. working with a coach like you or me, somebody who really understands this who's going to be pushing the need because you don't know what you don't know. No, you've got your own blind spots. Exactly. And, and I just want to like high five and support all of that too. I love therapy. Therapy is super important. I recommend it for everybody yep. and coaching really is that thing. You know, one of the things I do is I've got, it is like, I give my clients Vox or access to me and I say, mm-hmm. I want you to Vox me. I don't care if it's three in the morning. I'm not, my ringer's not going to be on. But you right. box me and you just get it out. You just at right. least tell me like, I'm struggling with this. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, just having that person to go to, knowing they can call you, they can call yep. me, they can say, what do I do with this? And we can say, this is what this. you do with that. Right, you don't respond. First of all, the fact that they're, you're not responding and you're asking me what to do is the first step. You've now put space between what, you know, what came in and what, what goes out. Right. So like, yay. Yes. (laughs) Yay. Yes. Right. And then we'll craft something that makes more sense. (laughs) Right. That, that is more aligned with your vision for yourself. And, you know, I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, and and yes, I I think what you're saying is is exactly right. Um, Therapy and coaching are two very different modalities. And my favorite clients are the ones who have been in therapy for a long time. And they're like, Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, but now what? Yes. Now what? What do I do? Yes. <laughs> now what do I do? Because the therapist isn't going to tell you what to do. No. And no. a coach, a coach will. 
right. to a degree, right? To, to right, a to a degree. But based on what you have uncovered together, based on that's what right. you've unearthed, based on who they know you to be and what they know that you deserve and want for yourself. Yeah. It's not that we're saying, you know what, Kate, you're going to get divorced on Thursday because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, when you've already s- uncovered that you are so miserable, then we're going to go, okay, how are we going to move through this? Mm-hmm. So what about, have you ever had the person and what would you say to the person who it says, okay, I have uncovered this. My relationship is not in alignment. I'm just not going to do that anyway. Can you, can you still help support me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, look, I, it, I, I have clients who have decided not to leave. Listen, there are a lot of very valid reasons that people stay yes. um, in the United States. Health insurance is a really good one. Oh, yeah. um, disability, you know, um, kids with special needs. It can be really, really hard. Like there are a lot of reasons that, or, you know, for some people, the money I've had clients who were like, listen, I like my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I like it. And he's, and he does this and he does that, but I really like our, our lifestyle and I'm safe. And so how do I reconcile these two things? Right. Yes. And, yes. you know, every decision has positive, you know, pros and cons. Exactly. You're, right. If you choose to leave the marriage and, you know, okay, you may, your lifestyle may take a real hit. Mm-hmm. And so that will be the con of one of the cons of leaving. Mm-hmm. If you're, if you value emotional intimacy and stability and connectedness more than you value lifestyle, yeah. then that choice becomes clearer. Yeah. If you value your lifestyle more than emotional intimacy. And you're like, whatever I can deal. Great. You know, but you know, a lot of options, but you know it. And you, and you, I think that what I, in, in those cases, we help people come to terms with that. Right. Okay. Every choice with every choice, you're saying yes to certain things and no to other things. And if you're choosing to stay in this relationship because you like your lifestyle, then you are saying no Mm -hmm. You're saying yes to money. You're saying yes to the lifestyle. You're saying yes to, you know, vacations in Cabo, whatever it is. You are saying no to emotional connectedness. You're saying no to um, whatever else. And, you know, can you, can you live with that? And if the answer is, I guess, right? Like that's where the quest, that's where the question is like being really clear on what you're saying yes and no to. Yes. Yes. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And and I want to build on that too. Like, I do as a, as an attorney, do a lot of the marital agreements. That's when then right. you can have an agreement. I agree that I do this, that maybe I can date other people. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I can have, yeah, yeah. These, these friendships. You agree that you're supporting here, but I also agree that you're doing that. You can agree whatever you want to agree. It's your That's relationship. Right. That's right. You listen at a certain point, you sit down and you say, okay, let's stop the sham. Yes. Right. Yes. Let's talk, let's put it all out there. I, you know, you need me to Mm -hmm. make you look good, to make you look like a a patriarch and a family man and all of those things. Right. And I need you because you bring home good money and you afford me a certain lifestyle. Let's talk about, let's negotiate some other terms here. Yes. Right. Put it on the table. Listen, the worst thing not have that conversation and then have, you know, infidelities and then things blow up. And then there's an ugly divorce because these things were talked about when both of you knew it anyway. Right. <laughs> right. Let's talk about it. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. And if you bring this to your husband and you're like, but we're not emotionally intimate, we don't have emotional intimacy. And I'd like to go find that somewhere else, but like, keep this up. And he's like, wait a minute, what? Then you have something to go to therapy with. That's like, oh, I require emotional intimacy. And if I, so wait, do you want to give me that? What? Of course. Like what are like, I didn't know or whatever. Right. It's communication. It's communication. Yeah, it is. And definitions, Mm -hmm. you know, like with my legal thing, I'm always big on definitions because if you don't have a common definition, you're not going to have a meeting of the minds. If I'm saying this is what emotional intimacy and my partner is saying, 
wait, what? I didn't know that. I thought that meant. Yes. Or what is marriage? We haven't even, we don't even define marriage. Like we kind of pretend that we do like love, honor, obey, you know, being being faithful. What is fidelity to you? Because how many times have you had somebody in your, in your life or, you know, a client's life that's like, it was just sexting. Right. Well, what do you, in my, in my mind, that's cheating in their Mm. mind. It's not cheating. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not right. I did not have have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've had people say it was just cyber sex. Uh-huh. Right. If right. that's not a problem for you, great. But if it is a problem for you, great. You just need to figure that out. Is it a problem for your partner? Right. Have yeah. you guys defined that? Yeah. And again, nobody, very few people sit down in the engagement honeymoon phase and go through this. That's right. That's right. And they need to, oh my God, do they need to? Yes. Yeah. And if they haven't in, if they didn't in the honeymoon, in the engagement period, then like do it now, right? Do it now. Yeah. So sometimes I tell my people, I really believe that everybody should go through their marriage every couple of years and kind of renegotiate everything and just talk about it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Are we happy financially? Are we happy emotionally? Are we happy sexually? Like, what do we need to do? Like, are we happy with our parenting? Yeah. Uh, You know, listen, married or divorced, right? Every divorce, every, every few years you want to relook at your parenting plan and say, is this working for us? Is this, or, and more importantly, is this working for our children? Yes. Yes. And I think a lot of the work that you do too, excavating yourself and figuring Mm -hmm. out that we grow and we change, you know, talking about your client who was into personal development. I'm yeah. different than I was before the infidelity. I'm different before than I was before I had two kids, before I had one kid. Yeah. I'm yeah. different every day. I evolve every day. I'm yeah. different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And always yeah. assessing that and communicating that and basing, you, we base so many of our life choices on those changes we have to also share that with the person that we're sharing our life with. Yeah. Cause so many yeah. assumptions are made. Yeah. 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 Well, Oh my God. I mean, just talking with you yesterday and then talking with you today, I just feel it's been such goodness. I think you have brought so much value to my audience, to my listeners. I really hope people check you out further where can they find you? And when do you, do you know when your book is coming out? Uh, yeah, January of 2024. So we're a little bit of a wait on that. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm getting my, my first, my first round of edits back from my publisher, uh, my editor, I think maybe this week. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. um, so uh, you can find me, my, my website is kateanthony.com. And on Instagram and TikTok, I am at the Divorce Survival Guide. And my podcast is the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. Wonderful. Well, definitely check her out, Um, especially if you are thinking any of those things that we talked about today. Should I stay? Should I go? And if I stay or if I go, what is it going to do to my kids? So I hope you got as much out of this as I did. Have an amazing week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are, because who you are is always more than enough. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been struggling lately? Relationship issues impact every area of your life. When I found out about my husband's infidelity, I was so devastated. I could barely function. Sleeping was impossible because I couldn't shut off my brain. Eating was a challenge because I felt nauseous all the time, and for the first month or so, everything felt pointless. Whether you're having trouble sleeping, feeling hopeless, or just can't focus, BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help. You can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that might not be available in your area. Just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll be matched with a therapist in under 24 hours. Then you can schedule secure video and phone sessions. 
Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. I know that confidentiality was important for me, especially early on when I couldn't even get my own mind wrapped around what was happening. And it was so comforting to be able to speak with someone candidly about everything I was going through to validate that what I was feeling and experiencing was completely normal. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Special offer to flaunt, create a life you love after infidelity and betrayal listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash flaunt. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash flaunt. Flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Are you looking for a great way to make new connections and spread your wings? Revel is a new kind of social platform exclusively for women over 40, where you can do just that. With virtual and in real life events, authentic conversations, and no ads, Revel is the community site exclusively designed for like-minded, fabulous, fun women in midlife. Learn more and join for free at hello revel slash flaunt. That's hello, R-E-V is in Victor, E-L, dot com slash flaunt. Come join us. It's nourishing and super fun. Tune in next time to flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal with radio host and live choreographer Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Develop naked self-worth and reclaim your confidence, enthusiasm, and joy so you can create a life you love and embrace who you are today. Download your free Sparkle Through Betrayal Recovery Guide at NakedSelfWorth.com. 